Hi, this is Harold Long. Welcome to the Hill Tran United Weekly Message and Podcast. I'm glad you're making time for this week's teaching. I will have more to say at the end, but for now, let's dive right in. Comes from 2 Corinthians chapter 3, verses 4 through 6. This is the confidence that we have through Christ in the presence of God. It isn't that we ourselves are qualified to claim that anything came from us. No, our qualification is from God. He has qualified us as ministers of a new covenant, not based on what is written, but on the Spirit, because that is, that is written kills, but the Spirit gives life. May God bless your hearing and understanding and application of the Scripture. Amen. Like the wind, unseen but present, moving and felt. Like the seasons, changing at exactly the right time. Like the pull of gravity that keeps me firmly planted to the ground beneath my feet. Your faithfulness. The same yesterday, today, and forever. Immovable, unshakable. Your love is steadfast and you keep every one of your promises. You will never leave and you never forsake the ones you love. You finish everything you start and never have you spoken a word in vain. As undeniable as the sun, rising day in and day out without fail, and just as certain as the setting of that same sun, you are faithful. Good morning, everyone. No, I'm not Pastor Harold. (laughs) But uh, Pastor Harold's in Arkansas with uh, doing his annual golf tournament for the Sober Cup. And so he's fellowshipping fellowshipping down there. So, um, but I am Pam Church, for those of you who do not know me, and I'm a member of the Transformation Worship Team. So I'm really happy to be here and share a message with you. And it usually happens that there's been something that happened in my life, so you just get to hear about it today. I can tell you that trusting God is easy when everything's going smoothly and we're feeling confident. I can also tell you that we will all face hardship at some point. I can tell you from a recent experience in my own life that I was relying on feelings and feeling very discouraged. And then uh, we're doing the uh, a Bible, uh, our devotional on Wednesday mornings, and you're welcome to join us at 8 a.m. for the Elephant Sanctuary. And it's the Jordan River Rules. And, and I'm like, why am I so discouraged? And then we had this little section that said, when I'm discouraged is because I'm looking at myself at my own goals, my hopes and aspirations, my dreams and drives. Whenever I'm encouraged is because I'm looking at the Lord and his plans and purposes. And so we know, you know, uh, God has a plan and we have a purpose. So, uh, so anyway, I, and I had a, the, really the reason I was discouraged was because, you know, as, as the president of United Women in Faith, I have a big group of leadership team. Two of my leaders were not agreeing together. So it's like, uh, and one became one of my leader, one of my executive officers was very discouraged. And I'm like, I'm like, you know what? We're going to do like Esther. We're going to pray for three days about this, and we're just going to keep on praying. And I'm like, but right now, we're going to pray right now. And so her and her roommate, we, we just held hands, and we said a quick prayer. Lord, this is a mess. You need to fix this. We don't know what to do. This was in her This was... Uh, something that was kind and in her heart and and so we don't know what to do and I'm like and then I just amen and we you know the next morning it's like this other lady she's like she goes she's she's a whole new lady she goes it's she, totally different I said why are we surprised because God we we asked God to take care of it she goes and it didn't even take three days so you know sometimes it takes three years or 30 years you know but we have to be patient so God's purpose isn't to destroy us, rather it's to stimulate our spiritual growth. 
In his great wisdom, he knows how to take an awful situation and use it to transform us into the image of Christ and equip us to carry out his will. Every adversity that comes along into our life is sifted through the Father's permissive will. That doesn't mean the difficulty itself is his perfect will, but he's allowed the trial to touch us so that he can use it to accomplish his wonderful purposes for our life. The Apostle Paul tells us in our scripture reading today that our adequacy comes from God, 2 Corinthians 3.5. If the Lord calls us to do something and that seems impossible or unreasonable, he will equip us for it. However, if you let feelings or fear of inadequacy cause us to doubt him, we could miss an opportunity to serve. Sometimes we're afraid to try something new because we compare ourselves to others. We feel someone else could do a better job than us. We hear voices that discourage us or plant seeds of doubt that keep us from trusting God. We are like Peter who took his focus off of Jesus and began to sink in the water because he was afraid of the waves. But remember, Jesus was there to reach out his hand. Storms in life will come, but it will stretch our faith. But it, it will also strengthen us so we are better prepared for the next storm. I want to share devotional because I was feeling discouraged that, you know, at that uh, meeting. And I was like, like, I'm just really, you know, why am I, am I really called to this? And my friend Edith got up to, uh, we were, we were having, our study was on the Lord's Prayer. And and the leader said, does anybody have something they'd like to share this morning? And my friend Edith jumps up and she's like, I had this devotional this morning I want to share, chosen and called. When God asks us to do something, our first instinct is often to look around at who we feel could do it better. We wonder why God didn't choose that person, who in our eyes is clearly more qualified than we are. God could have chosen anyone to be his mouthpiece and has and his leader for the incredible work he did with the Israelites. He picked Moses. He knew that Moses' strength and weaknesses were, were before he even called him, and he still picked Moses. Moses said to the Lord, please, Lord, I have never been a skilled speaker. Even now, after talking to you, I cannot speak well. I speak slowly and can't find the best words. Exodus 4.10. Did you ever feel that like God shouldn't have picked you for something? Do you think it would have been smarter for him to pick someone who is more creative, more intelligent, or more eloquent? You may not understand why God picked you for a certain task. But you can trust that when he calls you to do something, it's because he knows that you're not only capable, you're the one he wants to do the job. So that was like, okay, Lord, thank thank you for the reminder. And I went up to her, I go, I go, Edith, that was like, uh, that was like perfect. I go, I don't know, that's just how I was feeling, she said. I tried to get here, I was late for class, I tried to get here earlier, I was just going to show you, but I thought, Well, I'll just share it with everybody. And I'm like, how awesome, but our God is. So, and it, and so, and that, and that God impressed that on her heart to share. So God loves to see us put aside fear and choose to believe in him and move forward in obedience. A challenging assignment from the Lord is often a fork in the road. God provides you an opportunity to serve him. We must decide if we will take his path, even though we may feel unqualified. Moses felt unqualified when God called him to free his people in Egypt. He made excuses to God, but God said, Now go, I'll help you speak and teach you what to say, Exodus 4.12. And I want to show you something. This little pouch... I bought it annual conference, I think it was 2016 or 2017, and I was asking God for, I was praying for boldness. If anybody, when we'd have prayer, like, what would you like us to pray for you? I said, just pray for me to have boldness. Oh boy. And so anyway, uh, I carried this, I was district treasurer, so I had my checkbook and my balance, you know, my deposit slips and everything in this. So I looked at it, I looked at it a lot, you know, so during that time. So anyway, God, you just don't know how God's going to prepare you. So the question for today is not could you do it, but would you do it? 
I have heard it said that God does not call the equipped, but he equips the called. Do not use the word just to define yourself. Peter was just a fisherman. David was just a shepherd boy. Esther was just a young woman. Never set limitations uh, that affect your potential to be used by God. The Lord has a purpose for your life, and he's constantly working to achieve it. The Father has unique plans for each of his children. He wants to transform every believer into the image of his Son, Jesus Christ. In order to do so, we may have to go through some struggles and trials. It may not make sense to us, but he knows what he's doing. And spiritual fruit takes time to grow and mature. That's why we need patience and faith. He's working even when we do not see the results right away. God is never in a hurry, and he will not give up on us. God wants his children to be filled with the Spirit. This means every believer has God's Spirit living in him. But the extent of his rule in our lives depends on our obedience. Think of this as a voluntary surrender to the Holy Spirit's control. Be sensitive to his leadership and guidance. Be obedient to his promptings and dependent on his strength. Not your own, but his strength. Those who have surrendered to the Spirit's leadership are continually being transformed into Christ's likeness. The degree of surrender determines the level of transformation. Each believer decides who rules his or her heart life. Even those who have make no choice at all, unknowingly opt for self-rule. The fullness of the Spirit awaits those who choose God over self. We are called to live by faith, not fear. We are called to live by faith, not feelings. And if you are standing at the crossroads, remember that your adequacy is not in yourself, but in God and nothing is too difficult for him. Trust him and take a step. Reminds me, Rob and I were just watching Indiana Jones. And you know, Indy had to take a leap of faith. And he had to take, but he had to take the first step. Jesus will not let us fall. Jesus is right there, just like with Peter. His hands are right there. So remember, you just have to trust him. God's working in you and giving you the desire and the power to do whatever pleases him. Philippians 2.13. So let us pray. God, I am in awe of you. The problems of the world around me can be frightening, but you are greater than my problems. I'm so grateful I can always count on you. Your will is perfect, and your plans are good. Your power is perfected in my weakness, and it is greater than any situation I might face. Thank you for showing me your faithfulness every day. In Jesus' name, amen. Hi again, this is Harold. Thanks for listening to our weekly message and podcast. I hope that we have shared something helpful to you wherever you are in your spiritual journey. Just so you know a little bit more about us, we are Hill Tran United. Hill Tran United is an alliance between Hillsboro United Methodist Church and Transformation United Methodist Church. We are kingdom churches and kingdom communities for people who aren't into church. We meet Sunday mornings at 9 a.m. at Hillsboro United Methodist Church and 11 a.m. at Transformation United Methodist Church. Both churches are located in the northeastern tip of the beautiful Ozark Mountains, located in Jefferson County, Missouri. We also meet during the week in smaller groups that we call Life Groups and Home Churches, and that's how we make it relational. We hear regularly from people from all over who are engaging in personal and group studies based on our teaching, and we would love to know if that is happening where you are at. If you want to connect with us, you can find us on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Vimeo, and YouTube, where you can download our app from your favorite app store. Just search for the app titled Our Church by Church Dev and enter in Hilltran United and you can access all of our available audio, video teachings, plus through the app you can, and our, or our website, you can download our PowerPoint slides, bulletin, sermon notes, and discussion questions. It's all there for you. And lastly, if you want to learn more about how you can support 
Hillsboro United Methodist Church or Transformation United Methodist Church financially, please go to www.hilltran.org for more information and to give. We appreciate anything you can do to help. Hey, thanks for being a member of this extended church family. I'm glad we are in this together as kingdom people commencing shoulder to shoulder to help people rediscover life and experience the kingdom of God.